Howdy guys. Today I just want to quickly talk about how you should plumb up your bog filters to ensure that they don't empty when the power goes off. This method is also handy if you want to have more flow than is otherwise ideal for the filter. G'day, my name is Kev. The purpose of my channel and website is to help people build and maintain ponds and water features without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, please like and subscribe. This is one of my bog in a barrel filters. It's keeping the water clean and clear in this three by four meter pond. The problem is the check valve that prevents the water from flowing back into the pond if the power goes out has failed. So I'm going to install a breather pipe that will prevent the water from draining the bog should the power go off. The entire pipeline from the pump to the filter is filled with water. If the power goes off, this water is all siphoned back into the pond. This is because the pump sits lower than the water level in the bog. And it will continue to siphon until the water level in the pond and the bog equalise. If the bottom of the bog is higher than the water level in the pond, it will completely empty the bog. You can sort of see how that happens here. The pump is here in my DIY skimmer. The moment the pump is turned off, the flow of water is reversed and the water that was headed from the pond to the bog is now reversed. The pump itself isn't spinning backwards. This is the siphon action in effect. The bog is beginning to empty back into the pond. Once I turn the pump back on, everything starts getting drawn back into the skimmer. Now, if it was left off for an extended period of time, it will slowly drain the filter. All the gunk that has accumulated in the bottom of the bog filter will end up back in the pond. The other problem is that the excess water from the bog will probably cause the pond to overflow. And then when the pump comes back on, refills the bog, you'll wonder why the pond has dropped a few inches. So you could just install a check or no return valve to prevent this, but they can fail as I've found out. So there is a better way. If we install a breather pipe, when the power goes off, air is sucked into the pipe, causing the siphon to break or stop. Therefore the water remains inside the bog and not back into the pond. So all I'm using to retrofit my setup is a T-piece fitting, a reducer and a ball valve. Because some water will want to shoot out of the breather pipe, I add the valve so that I can control just how much. On this pond, I want the majority of the water from the pump going to the bottom of the bog. The other pipe work you can see there to the left is just the outflow back to the pond. Well, in this case, via a stream. So bogs work best if we direct the water to the base of the bog and have it move through various size rocks and gravel. Large rocks on the bottom getting smaller and smaller as you move up through the bog. The large rocks have lots of gaps between them that allows the water to spread out throughout the bog. This slows the velocity of the water and allows solid waste like fish poo to settle in the base of the filter. On my barrel bogs, I like to add a valve at the base for easy clean out. While on larger bogs, I'll use a barrel as a clean-out pit to position a sump pump for clean-outs. You can see some of the different bogs I've built for my ponds by checking out my bog filter playlist. Bogs work best with a slow flow of water, so by having the breather pipe and valve, we can really control how much water is directed down through the filter and how much is just allowed over the top and to return to the pond. Having this control over the amount of flow is awesome if you want to have a bog filter and a waterfall running off the same pump. As a general rule, I like to allow 12,000 litres per 30 centimetre width of stream or waterfall. But that kind of flow is only suitable for quite large bog filters, far too much for this bog in a barrel. If you're curious on how to calculate the optimal flow for your bog filter, I have a flow video 
I also have a video on the optimal size your bog should be. Again, you should be able to find these in the bog filter playlist. <laughs> anyway, both of these rules I broke on this pond, and that's the beauty of bogs. They're so forgiving of mistakes. I had too much flow running through this bog, so I'm happy I can dial it back a bit now without reducing the flow through the stream or the overall circulation of the pond. If you listen, you can hear exactly how the breather pipe works. When I turn the power off, air is sucked in and no more siphon. So the water remains in the bog and not the pond. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, give it a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.